For this project, you will need unfinished candlesticks, tools for distressing, acorns, varnish or glaze in matte and glossy finish, burnt umber acrylic paint, hippo gray acrylic paint, rope, and hot glue. Hi, it's Mona. Today we're going to do a craft project um, for fall. We're going to do acorn candlesticks. We're going to paint it, distress it, um, embellish it a little bit with some rustic rope, and put an acorn on it. So let's get started. First thing you want to do is go to a craft store and buy an unfinished candlestick. Now this is going to be a finished set that we're going to have for sale later at chicky.com. So the first thing you want to do is get the unfinished candlestick from the craft store and you want to distress it. Now this is a good way to get out some of your aggressions or frustrations. So here I have an ice pick and we're going to use a couple of different tools just to kind of get um, different markings and on the finished one you can see I had used the the ice pick to make it look like wormholes, um, you can use a hammer, I used a um, wrench, so we'll do that and you can kind of see how I do that and then we'll go into finishing it after that. Here's the ice pick and you just kind of want to make a bunch of little holes right near each other and I don't know if you can see that or not but it'll show up later in the finished project. So just kind of go into different areas around and make the wormholes. Might want some up here. And it's a very subtle effect. So you won't necessarily see every little thing and you really cannot make a mistake because you want it to look distressed and you want it to just look worn and old. So that was the ice pick. And then you might take the hammer and kind of hit it. Now don't hit it hard enough to break the candlestick, but you want to put some dents in there, um, maybe round out some of the edges. Try not to hit yourself. And if it puts marks on there that maybe you weren't, you know, discolors it because your, your hammer is rusty like mine, that's okay, don't worry about it. We're gonna cover it all with paint. So if you're having a bad day, this might be the perfect project for you. Here's, um, I have some wire cutters where you can just kind of scrape into it. Um, wherever you want, there's no right, no wrong. And then I have these pliers, or wrench, I guess. I'm not even sure what it is. I just got worried it's pliers. <laughs> um, and just kind of put, you know, the teeth marks in there. Scrape it, you know, hit it, whatever you want. You know, don't hold back. Um, maybe you want some here. You know, even if you had, you know, if you didn't have all the tools, it's all right. Go drop it outside. Go hit it with a rock. It doesn't matter. You might want to put a couple more dents over here. Even a screw would work where you could just um, kind of scrape it, um, indent it. You know, you just want it to look worn. And you really can't go too deep with it either. You could have surface ones or deeper ones. It doesn't make any difference. Okay, it looks like I've got it pretty well distressed around most of it. Um, I might want to round a couple of the edges here a little bit so it doesn't look so perfect. Take a screwdriver to it, anything. Okay, looks good to me. So what we're gonna do next is take a little bit of acrylic paint and I have burnt umber. I have a burnt umber for the base. So you have your paintbrush and your paint. Now there's no need to be especially neat about it. Let me get the paint open. Just put it down. And then you're going to just paint right over it, get it in the, in the cracks and the crevices and all your distress, distressing areas. And there's no right or wrong thickness, just keep painting it.
I might do a time lapse here. Okay, keep going. Cover all the areas and don't forget the bottom too. I like to work on wax paper so that you know it's an easy cleanup, nothing really sticks to it. Works great. So keep going. Now these candlesticks have the built-in um, brass candle holder. And if you get paint on it, don't worry, it scrapes right off when it's dry. So don't even stress about that. What I like to do is I will flip it over once I once I feel like I got everything going this way. I will flip it over. I don't worry about fingerprints or anything because it's distressed and you just don't even see it when it's finished. But then you can see the areas that sometimes you don't hit when you get it from a different perspective. And always don't forget to paint the bottom of it either because you want it to look complete and like a really nice job. Okay, the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to put the distressed finishing on it and I'm going to use a hippo gray for that, but you can use any kind of a color. It could be any gray, it could be a beige, it could be whatever you like. Put a little gray down. Okay. And all you do is you take it and you start painting over it. You want to get it in the nooks and crannies and wherever, and again, no need to be neat about it. That's the beauty of it. And then I like to get a section done. All I do is take a paper towel, and I, it's a dry paper towel, and all I do is kind of start rubbing some of the paint off. So you can leave as little or as much on as you want. And going and then you have and then you have that and it gives it a nice washed look. You go to the next section, do the same thing. And as you can see it's starting to bring out some of the some of the little knots and, and holes and scrapes that you put into it. Which looks really nice. probably will get messy when you're doing it, which is what crafts are all about. I hardly ever do a craft where, where I end up with as clean as I start. It's really nice results. And there you have it for the wash. Now we'll give that a couple minutes to dry, and then we will put a varnish on there, and then we'll finish it up. The acorns that um, I use in this project are ones that I just found, and the only thing that I do is occasionally I will let them dry out if they're a little fresher. I might put them in the oven for an hour on a very low temperature and let them dry out a little bit. Sometimes the caps will pop off, in which case you just glue it back on, let it dry, and then I like to varnish it just to give it a little strength and to bring out some of the color because if you don't do the varnish, it looks very bland and um, they look kind of dry, but this brings out a lot of the coloring. Okay, I've gone ahead and varnished it, and I used a matte varnish because I really didn't want it to be glossy because it was it's a rustic piece. So I used a matte varnish, and I did that already. It's dry so that you don't have to watch me do that. And now all we have to do is finish with the embellishments, and this is pretty easy. Um, I have a big... Um, thing of rope that I happen to have on hand. So I just started to cut a few pieces off to to decorate the the edges and we'll do that. And all you have to do is use a little hot glue, go around and get it going. There we go. If you get it nice and hot you have a little more working time as well. And then start with the rope. Squish it around. And then it'll meet, and then you just hold it for a second. 
and that part is finished. If you have a little extra, just kind of wipe it off before it dries. A lot of times you can peel it off after, too. But that way you don't worry, have to worry about taking any of your paint off as well. Go around the bottom. Okay, we've got it. What would we do without glue guns? Okay, bring it around here. Hold it for a second. There we go. Make sure it's in place. And then you can just take it and put it right here. We're just going to hot glue this um, with the part of the stem hitting, hitting the rope. There we go. And we'll go like this so it doesn't end up dripping down too much. Get your stem in there. Hold it in place while it cools off. A little bit of the excess off. Just remember if it's too hot, don't do that. And then you just let it dry. And there you go. There's your candlestick. And now we have a matching pair. And I think it looks beautiful for the fall. And you could put it out for Thanksgiving, um, Halloween, and just have it carry through the whole fall season. And hope you like it. And again, it's available at www.chick-e.com. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Mona's shirt was provided by Chicky Limited. Make sure you visit them at www.chick-e.com. Our items are also available on their website for purchase. This has been a Craft Clutch production.